Robert Serino, and today we're going to talk about how to use a pendulum, also known as pendulum dowsing. So a pendulum is a good tool to tap into the intuition or the subconscious mind uh, and answer any kind of questions that we may have that we may be feeling a little confused about or uh, we're not too sure of a direction to take on something and we'd like some of the inner guidance to some of our inner guidance to come out but we may have what I like to call a little bit of emotional static and our minds kind of getting in the way so we utilize the pendulum to bring forth some of those answers. This pendulum is a pendulum that I made using a, a rock and some uh, hemp twine but there are many different options to make a pendulum or to buy a pendulum. Some are made from crystals, some are made from wood. Uh, like I said, this is made from stone. Many materials to make them from. Um, the benefits of, of buying one may be more so to, for something that's a little more sensitive, a little bit more balanced. But if you could figure out a way to just create this, this nice swinging um, device here, anything could work. So in order to use a pendulum, we first have to program it or give our subconscious a way to communicate with us and tell us how we'd like it to communicate with us. So first, we'll go, we could either hold it from the top, I would take it from the knot that I have up here and hold it like this, or I sometimes like to just grasp it with two fingers and kind of let it sit, hang over my finger and just hold it like this. Now, what we do first to program it is we start with a simple neutral position, which I like to just let it swing at a diagonal. And then I say, I tell it what I'd like it to do. So I like to say, I tell it if, if, I, if it's gonna give me a yes answer to a question, I'd like it to swing vertical. So then I put it in that vertical position and I purposely swing it that way and say, this is how I'd like the yes answer to be. If I would like it to be a no answer, I put it back in the neutral position and then I say I would like the no to be a horizontal swing. And then I put it purposely into a horizontal swing and keep holding that intention that that's how I would like it to communicate with me as a no. And then once I do that, I bring it back to neutral and we're ready to go. The pendulum is working through a series of micro movements in your muscles. So when you ask a question, your subconscious allows the body to do these little micro movements that you can barely, you can't really even see. If, you're, if I'm looking at my hand and I ask it a question, I can't even really see the way my hand's moving, but I notice that the pendulum moves. It gives it a almost a feeling that the pendulum is doing it on its own. Really, my body's doing it, but something that's not uh, consciously in my control. When I'm using this pendulum, I have to be uh, in a mind state that is detached from any of the answers that I'm looking to get from this. So if I, I may start off using a pendulum and feel like I'm influencing the answer. I ask it a question and I feel like I'm the one putting it in a space. So it takes a little bit of practice to get to a point where you just feel very detached and very open to any outcomes that uh, the pendulum may give you when you ask it a question. So when we first begin using a pendulum, we would start by asking some questions that we already know the answers to, just to really get a feel for how it works and understand you know, how it's, how it's gonna move and get to a point where we feel comfortable that we're detached from the outcomes that it's gonna bring us, uh, no matter what they are, knowing that we're getting our emotions out of the way and getting our, our will out of the way for it to be one way or the other. So I would ask it something simple in the beginning, like, is my name Albert? And it immediately goes to a yes answer. So I let that, okay, that's good. So we'll bring it back to the neutral position. Sometimes we have to uh, you know, purposely bring it back to a neutral position. Um, sometimes it'll just kind of go right back in there once you get your answer and you, and you confirm to yourself, you say, okay, and then it'll just go back to neutral. Um, so the next question I would say is, I might say is, uh, do I live in an apartment? Yes, you know, an obvious answer, something we know, and we could use these things, and I feel, now I feel. Once I've, I've become comfortable with using the pendulum, then I could start asking it questions that I may not know the answer to and I'm looking for answers. Um, one thing you could use a pendulum for 
is to really help remove any doubt you may have in yourself or in any in a situation and bring some confidence to to how you're whatever you're acting upon so a question I may ask is I may say you know I'm, I'm going to apply for a job and I may ask I have to be specific as a yes or no to a yes or no question um, so I might say do I have currently the skills to perform the tasks that are required of me effortlessly and say I get a no answer okay so that might not be the end that might that's not something to just stop with and say okay I can't I can't do this job you may want to ask further questions but remember be specific and continue going so then I might say well would I be able to do this task if I put a little bit of effort and research into it and I get a yes okay good and that's how you could continue to build upon that and ask these questions to understand what you may need to do to get the outcome that you're looking for another example maybe you have a situation in your life that's causing you a lot of uh, emotional stress and it's actually it's causing a lot of mental stress so you may be in a situation that you are not sure if it's toxic for your being to be in or, or not. So I might say to the pendulum, uh, is you, you know, you think of the situation and you say the situation specifically, I'm going to be more general in this, but you say, you know, is this situation, uh, is this situation toxic to my personal growth? And I get a yes. Okay. So now I have a yes. So now I could build upon that and I could say, well, is this would it would it be for my best interest to just walk away from the situation and I may get a yes or I may get a no and if I get a no well then I want I would like to know you know well what do I have to do to to fix the situation so then I would say um, is there some inner healing work that I need to do to make this situation better and I might get a yes there or I might get a no and if I get a no, then I might say, is there something that um, someone else needs to handle within themselves to help the situation harmonize? And if I, and then I could, I might get a yes for that, or I might get a no. So as you see, you can continually build upon each question. You know, one, the first, if you get a question or if you get an answer uh, right off the bat, that that makes you even more confused you could continue to delve into that question more and more. But like I said earlier on, always remember, stay very specific. Um, when you ask questions that has a, lot of, uh, has a lot of criteria or circumstances that are around it and a lot of potential to go many different ways, you're then kind of left asking the pendulum something that uh, it can't give you a definitive answer. Um, so you may actually get sometimes you may ask a question and it may stay in the neutral position and it may not go to a yes or no and if that's the case then you may want to reevaluate the question that you asked and try to be a little bit more specific so not only could we tap into our intuition uh, by using a pendulum but we could also utilize a pendulum to find something that we've lost uh, say I lost my wallet in my uh, and and I may feel like it's in my house just to um, keep this shorter so I say okay you know is the wall is my wallet in my house and I say yes okay so now I build upon that question again I say you know is my wallet down in the on the first floor of my house no is it in the is it on the second floor of my house and I'd get a yes and then I could start going and being more specific okay so is the is my wallet in the bathroom in is my wallet in my bedroom and I'll get yes or no answers and then I could work to I could eventually lead up to more specifically to pinpoint where exactly the lost object is um, again as before be specific and practice so you may want to take an object and put it somewhere and start asking the pendulum questions to get yourself used to understanding how it works and get yourself confidence in using the pendulum to get these responses and other things if you want to delve into the more spiritual realm 
Um, pendulums could also be used to communicate with um, past loved ones. Um, it could be used to communicate with your spirit guides. Always be specific and always ask for um, beings of benevolence and, and always of a positive nature. Um, keep your mind in a good place and keep your heart in a space of love. You don't want to draw anything in that, that might try to um, confuse you or uh, the like. So in this video we covered what a pendulum is, um, how we may use a pendulum, how to program the pendulum, uh, how to gain practice and confidence in using the pendulum, and some of the other uses that it could be used for. To pick up pendulums or other tools, check out www.catacombculture.com. And to watch more videos like this, check out www.catacomb.tv.